if you don't see color you don't see me hi guys welcome back to my channel from the title of the video you can obviously see that i'm doing another chit chat video i saw a tweet and the tweet was just so dumb but I'm, i need to give you guys the background context to it megan she has an article with vogue and they also interviewed harry he was talking about unconscious biases in this country and how it leads to racism just like clockwork people were offended this guy he said britain is probably the least racist country in the world we take in 300,000 net immigrants every single year prince harry married an idiot and now he's become one it just made me think about like the times that i've experienced racism and the things that i've experienced as being a black woman growing up in britain brown skin for the win now they be chatting like you hating because you black and she pretty because she like is you stupid you i live in london but if you cross the road you're in hertfordshire primary school that i went to was in Hertfordshire. From the time I was in nursery to year six in primary school, I was the only black girl. Like year three, year four, these two black boys joined. Maybe before that, I can't really remember. But I never ever saw myself particularly different from them. Obviously, I'm not an idiot. I knew I'm black. But you know how children are? Children are like the purest people ever. But I can't lie, from early, my dad let me and my brothers know you have to work twice as hard to get half of what they get obviously the older i got i was like yeah this guy did not lie it wasn't until maybe year six the first time that somebody was racist to my face so can you imagine year six you're like 10 11 and i just remember it was a snow day where i live there's like a big open space so when it would snow everyone would go and play out i was playing out with a girl that i know from school and she had brought her next door neighbor we were all like chilling we we're getting along i don't know what happened but me and him ended up her neighbor ended up having an argument he then decided to tell me to go back to my own country i was born in this country so when somebody tells you to go back to your own country and you're born here the only thing you're thinking in your head is where do you want me to go? I don't know what came over me. This was the first and only time I've been in a physical fight. It was like the ancestors were whispering in my ear, slap him. I slapped him and me and him are like, we're full on scrapping in the snow. And my friend, she's just like, she doesn't know what to do. So she's gone, run back home and she's gone and grabbed her mom. When her mom came, she had to rip us off each other. It was like literally on top of me, but I'm like punching upwards and he's punching me, but I'm like, nah my ancestor told me to slap you i went home mom i just had a fight and she was like what what happened are you okay and i was like this boy told me to go back to my own country and as soon as my mom heard that she was like i hope you beat him up there were more things in primary school that made me realize that these guys actually see me as different this might sound so minor we went on a school trip when we were on our way back we're all sitting on the coach and they're all going around saying who they fancy get to me and they're like oh danielle who do you fancy and i'm like nobody and they're like really and i'm like yeah really they go oh what about x what about y x and y were obviously the only two black boys in our year and then once they had got through x and y apparently my options for fancying people were done and i was just like wow because the boy that i had a little crush on he was this little white boy <laughs> i mean 11 year old danielle and 23 year old danielle are very different these guys they were like i mean you need to stay with your own people so i went to a school that pretty much everyone was black like the school was no exaggeration 90 percent black and all of my friends were applying to go to secondary schools that were in hertfordshire and it was such a culture shock for me because i was like all of a sudden i went from being in the minority to now i am the majority it wasn't all fun and games like being in a black majority school because that's when i and i don't even think he even had a word back then but that was like the first time i ever encountered colorism we have a word here i don't even know if the kids still say it it's a really nasty word it's literally called blick spelled b-l-i-c-k it basically means a person who's really really dark skinned i had never heard of the word before because like i said i went to a primary school which was basically white and black people in the uk and white people in the uk we have really really different slang it was always negative and at the same time i was hearing the word lighty for the first time 
and lied to you was obviously to describe mostly when it came to girls and they would always say oh that girl's a piff lighty so being blick was down here being a lighty was up there and colorism is a thing in the uk you see it literally everywhere where you have forms of black media especially music videos black music artists in the uk rarely ever use a dark skinned girl at the same time i'm not sure if that's the hill that i'll be willing to die on for representation because most of the time the women that they put in it they've over sexualized them and there's nothing wrong with owning your sexuality but a lot of the sexuality that these men are talking about is not necessarily positive it's always talking about using women i'd be a liar if i didn't say some of these songs are bangers even when you're like like you're listening to some of the songs they'll literally at their big age these people are approaching 30 and they're still saying oh me and a lighty and colorism is as big a deal here in the UK as it is out in America it's a huge thing in Asia big in Africa in the Caribbean so after being in a black majority school obviously I was like that was fun but I wanted to go to a sixth form I don't know if it's changed now I don't know if it's compulsory for you to go to sixth form but back in 2012 I finished school at 16 and then you can go on to do your A levels I ended up applying to a school in Hertfordshire I knew that I was going to be back to being in the minority 3% of the population and going to a school that was majority black is not what life is like in the UK and I wanted to go somewhere that would resemble what university would be like somewhere that would resemble what the workplace would be like worst two years of my life honestly a levels was horrible and then in addition to the school that i went to yeah i didn't have a good time there i really disliked <laughs> that but i remember like i think after my first day or two i must have tweeted how the school was dead because i'm not gonna lie the school was dead i don't know how these little creepers found my twitter they found it and then went to go and gossip their big mouth did you see that the new girl doesn't like us she said our school was dead so when i went to like school the next day they're all looking at me but <laughs> nobody's saying nothing to my face so you think i cared this girl she used to ask me dumb questions like what is it like being black what <laughs> and I used to be like human what do you mean what do you mean what's it like being black like it's some special experience that you have a subscription for they would say really really off things about the area that I lived in and I remember one time I was in the common room and one boy he I think he knew that I lived in that area he was like my dad buys a car just so he can drive there because he's scared of getting robbed i was like wow and i said your dad's scared of getting robbed by grannies yeah because there's only grannies that shop in the area that he's talking about a lot of them came from really well off families they lived in nice houses i remember somebody was saying that they were like from a gated community and i was like i've got a conservatory you know i'm from the said area that you're saying your dad's scared of getting robbed in and it just felt like a lot of these people went out of their way to make me feel uncomfortable in the uk racism most of the time is not gonna be like somebody walking up to you and calling you the n-word i would actually prefer for somebody to be racist to my face then have somebody continuously do microaggressions towards me which is what the uk's racism is like microaggressions for some of you that don't know i'll put the definition down below but basically it's so subtle the most instances that i've experienced racism it's been microaggression there's only been a few times i would only say that i've only experienced like overt racism maybe twice in my life once being that boy telling me to go back to my own country and then i remember when i was in uni and i was crossing the road and this guy he's in a car i'm probably gonna bleep this out because when this channel eventually blows which it will say amen i don't want to be demonetized he basically lowered his window slowed down his car to call me a black so before he manages to like drive off i'm like it's you that is a it's the girl in your car that is a bitch and it's your mother that is a bitch. even crossing the road whilst black and i know for a fact had i been walking with maybe like a group of black boys that man wouldn't have felt so emboldened to do that because that's another thing black women often take the brunt of racism i'm not saying that black men don't experience racism of course they do all you have to do is turn on the tv they think that because of the hyper masculine 
stereotype that is put on black men there's almost this kind of fear so oh let me do it to the women because women are obviously physically weaker had i been like walking like say with my boyfriend or like and his friends or something he would not have said that but because i was a black woman he felt yeah today is the day that i can be the true racist i've always wanted to be like don't get me wrong i feel like this video has been like kind of negative but I love being black British, I really do. I think it's such a unique ethnic group to belong to. It's like a melting pot of different black cultures and we've literally in such a short space of time created our own culture. And there's nothing more in this world I am proud of being black. I love being black. And it's sad seeing like how they treat Megan for instance who is a white passing mixed race woman and they still treat her like dirt just because she has a black parent. I'm not even surprised. Uh, how the British press behave towards Meghan. What they do to her is what black people in the UK pretty much experience every single day. Which is funny because when they first like started dating and when he got engaged to her, all they could talk about is how tolerable to race they were. Just to literally judge her for every little thing she does. I hate it when people say things like, oh, you're pulling out the race card. Like, please, if there was a race card, I would be bringing it out at every single opportunity and this especially comes from like liberal allies i don't see color if you don't see color you don't see me and my life is literally dictated by the fact that i'm a woman the fact that i'm black the fact that i'm Ghanaian. there's nothing wrong with seeing race and i think the people who say that they don't see color i know that they don't mean any harm by it. in actuality you're saying if you don't see color it means you don't see racism i'm just gonna pretend that it doesn't happen there's literally so much that i feel like i could have still said but i would have been talking for ages i didn't want my channel to literally just be me talking about makeup or like doing like a one-off like fashion haul or something like i love all of those things but i'm a multi-dimensional person and these are things that i'm interested in and i thought it would just be like something different like everything that i use on my face will be in the description box before you leave make sure to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below don't forget to follow me on instagram at dys.beauty and follow me on twitter at dys underscore beauty thank you for watching this video guys and i'll see you in my next one bye guys and every pretty chocolate girl, I hope y'all all know your worth. Because you dark or you light brown, they saying you ain't right now. Never, ever, ever let a nigga put you.